Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Don't you just love these special edition Produce Mom podcasts? I sure do. My name's Lori Taylor, and I am so thrilled to come with right here on the show today to celebrate Arbor Day. Arbor Day is, uh, you know, we're going to talk more about what Arbor Day means today on this show, but uh, we're bringing three people that are representing three different organizations that are doing something very special to celebrate Arbor Day this year in 2022. So our three guests, we are bringing together um, Allie Berman, She is with Kroger. She's the foundation program manager. We have Brian O'Donnell. He is with the Arbor Day Foundation, manages all their corporate partnerships. And we have James Ketchall. He is with the Fruit Tree Planning Foundation. So it's going to be a great show. We have three incredible guests and it's time to bring them on the show. So Ali, we'll start with you. Please say hi to our guests and introduce yourself. Thanks, Lori. It's so great to be here. Really excited to be able to share more about the work that we're doing with the incredible partners, um, Arbor Arbor Day Foundation um, and the Fruit Tree Planting um, Partners. So I'm Allie Berman. I work at Kroger um, in the foundation office. Um, which specifically for um, this project, I work on the Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation. As many of you probably know, listening to the show, uh, depending on where you are, uh, Kroger is a chain of of grocery retail stores um, across uh, 35 states. Um, We have over 2,500 stores. Uh, We consider ourselves America's grocer. So really excited to kind of bring... um, to life, a project that, you know, directly affects our communities in both hunger and sustainability. Um, I specifically work on the Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation, um, which is our public charity. Um, And I've been working in this role for about three and a half years, and I bring a background of uh, nonprofit, for-profit, and public sector, and I'm really passionate about sustainability and building stronger and equitable communities. Oh, Allie, I love it. I feel like we're already spirit animals with that self-introduction you gave. I love, I love your passion and uh, it's going to be a great show. Thank you very much. James, please say hello to everyone and tell us a little bit more about the fruit or the fruit tree planting foundation. I feel like that could be a tongue twister, James, if we said it you know, five times fast, right? But (laughs) say hi to our guests. Yes. Yes. So say hello to our guests. We're here on Arbor Day. It's a great day. Well, happy Arbor Day to everyone. I'm James Ketchell and I'm, you know, just so pleased to be talking trees today. Uh, You know, the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation has actually been around for 20 years, planting fruit trees in communities all over the U.S. and frankly, all over the world. You know, I'm, I'm a board certified master arborist and you know, some of the best times I have planting trees or planting fruit trees, actually, with right. communities where we know, you know that fruit's going to go to good use. I love that. Oh, this is going to be a great episode. All right. And Brian O'Donnell, it's uh, it's your big day because you work with the Arbor Day Foundation. Happy Arbor Day, my friend. Please introduce Thank yourself. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is kind of our Super Bowl, really, right? Yes. Um, so, yes, happy Arbor Day to everyone out there. We're really, really excited. Um, so there's a couple of things you might not know, but this year is the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day. So, yay us. It's our nation's wow. oldest environmental holiday. Um, so hopefully you're doing something tree minded today. Um, hopefully you're taking a picture with a tree. Hopefully you're hanging out with trees, you're just kind of gearing your mind to think more green. Um, so my role at the Arbor Day Foundation is a corporate partnerships manager. I actually come to this role after about 13 years in Japan. I was uh, sourcing coffee and, and uh, roasting coffee in Japan, uh, a brand wow. that I launched. Wow. And uh, really was inspired by what the Arbor Day Foundation was all about, the reach, the, the, just the nature of really trying to solve problems that face society through yeah. tree planting. So I love really it. 
No, I'm so happy you're here. I'm going to keep the mic with you right now. So sure. with it being Arbor Day, tell, tell people what Arbor Day means. I mean, what is, why does this day exist? How long has it existed and what's the significance of it? Right. Yeah. So, uh, so Arbor Day Foundation, we are actually 50 years old today. The holiday is 150 years old today. Wow. So we've been around for a bit. Our mission is to inspire people to plant, nurture, and celebrate trees. We're actually the largest nonprofit member organization dedicated to planting trees with over a million members, supporters, and partners. So we've been around since 1972. And in that time, we've actually helped to plant and distribute almost 500 million trees in more than 50 countries. So there's a lot of kind of excitement that, you know, more and more the conversation about obviously climate change and all of the different things that actually trees have solutions for uh, are coming more to light. And we're really seeing where once we maybe thought trees are kind of a nice to have in a neighborhood, we're realizing they're actually a must have. And right. so it's partnerships like this with the fruit tree planting organization and our partners like Kroger that really make these projects possible. Right. So that's very interesting. A must have, um, explain why, why everyone at the, at the Arbor Day foundation knows this and why, what, <laughs> you know, why, you know, maybe the general population doesn't like what, why are they a must have? Right. Well, if you, you know, it, it's really something that most people do know. If you think back to third grade science, yeah. right. What do we know that trees do? Trees clean our air. They provide oxygen. They absorb carbon, right? They sequester carbon. Mm -hmm. They clean our water. They clean our soil. They're there for storm resiliency. Um, you know, more and more in the urban environment where you, you may have heard that the term uh, heat islands, urban heat islands. Sure. So we're, those, those exist because there's a lack of trees. There's a lack of tree canopy, a lack of shade. There's, you know, a bunch of concrete and we, we can see trees cooling our cities by up to 10 degrees. Wow. Um, I mean, it's not an insignificant, uh, you know, amount of, of heat, obviously, and it isn't something that is really hard to imagine, right? Mm -hmm. Just think about one time when you were standing, not under the shade of a tree and how hot you felt and how good it felt when you would move back under shade, right? Right. Um, these are not real complex ideas. Um, and when we look at the, the complexity of some issues, it really comes back more to equity and where have we placed trees? What have we done with those trees and, and who has them and who doesn't have them? So that's right. more, I think, the complex issue. Um, and where, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm just yeah. probably speaking from the heart. I mean, anecdotally sure. speaking here, I don't know, but I would assume that, you know, there's a lack of them in, in areas where, you know, there's lower income, you know, there's exactly, you know, you mentioned already kind of like these, these concrete jungle, like very yep. urban areas. But yep. when you think about places where there's, beautiful landscaping and, um, you know, park like settings and the, that are accessible to, you know, the public through whether it's your own little housing communities or, you know, the areas maintained by the cities, you know, mm -hmm. like I just, I just, you know, you can tell when you're in a nice part of any city across this, this country, um, versus a low income part, oftentimes right. just by what the, the gr green space looks like, you know? Right. Exactly. What color is it? Right, right. Right. If it's, if it's gray, there's a good chance that it's a low to moderate income neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There chance there tends to be, you know, like a, a, you know, three times the likelihood that it's more of a community of color mm -hmm. or some type of uh, population that is, um, you know, doing jobs that are, um, blue collar or, right. you know, any, any kind of, uh, socioeconomic situation that, that's kind of more indicative of that really the, the, the sad thing is that you could virtually lay a map of green space over any city in the U S and you can draw the lines between neighborhoods and who's living there, how much mm. they're making, you know, and then the, the other line that you can draw is essentially the health Im implications, right? So sure. actually heat um, is one of our, is the, is the greatest killer, the natural killer um, in terms of natural disasters it's a kind of a silent killer. It exacerbates exa uh, existing conditions. So it isn't something that we talk a lot about, but it actually increases asthma, increases all kinds of different health issues in those neighborhoods as well. So if we're robbing those neighborhoods of green spaces, we're robbing them of some of that potential as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. I don't know if I'll ever think of Arbor Day the same way after all of that insight, Brian, <laughs> but, um, you know, one other thing before we shift yeah. the mic over to James and then Allie, but I, 
another thing that as you were talking about that, I mean, from the carbon sequest, you know, sequestering the carbon, carbon, right. um, and then the, um, like the soil health, those, mm -hmm. those mentions that you made, my mind is immediately going to the values of regenerative agriculture, which, yeah. you know, as a steward to the farming community at the produce yeah. moms, like that is a top priority for everyone right yeah. now and a rising area of, of knowledge and um, also, you know, consumer demand. People want to know that their products are, are being raised sustainably. And, um, you know, right. in, in the case of farming, regenerative farming practices being, being top of mind and top priority. So, um, I, I assume this is all very interconnected, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, and, you're 100% 100, 100 yeah. accurate. Yeah. I mean, it really is. So what we're seeing too is, is just the, you know, for a long time, I think that these have sat kind of in juxta juxtaposition to one another. You either had yeah. trees or you had agricultural land, but the reality is, is that with good agroforestry practices, you don't need to go either or, mm -hmm. um, especially in, you know, indigenous landscapes and places where people are really living in and among the forest we can't take away agriculture. We simply need to better educate and, and really learn how do we work in good balance and better ecosystems within those practices. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Very well stated. Um, James, I would love to talk to you. You're, you kind of live in one of those concrete jungles we were talking about. James shared pre-show with me that he's in Queens, uh, New York City, but there is a, there's some deliberate green space there. Of course, the famous park, but um, James, I would I would love for you to share a little bit more about the fruit tree planting organization, um, you know, and, and why Arbor Day is such a big deal for you all. Sure. So Arbor Day, you know, really it celebrates all the wonderful things that trees do for us and, and really, I think, galvanizes folks to to say thanks to trees. Right. You know, whether that's by caring for a tree or planting a tree, you know, that's something that as an arborist, I'm living every day. You know, particularly in my neighborhood in Queens, New York, it's, uh, you know, you can walk around the neighborhood and you see fig trees, you see persimmon trees, uh, and, you know, you realize that these are trees that folks actually planted here, you know, like sure. New York City, even really like the rest of the country, right? Like people came from somewhere else and, you know, folks brought seeds or seedlings of that fig tree from back home in Italy. Uh, or they brought that persimmon uh, from from home. You know, they, right. they plant them and they grow them. That's, you know, it's not just feeding them uh, food, which is great for your body, uh, but it's also feeding your soul and telling your, your story. So, sure. you know, one of the things that really drives us, the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation, is making sure that these trees that we're planting with communities really are reflecting the communities that we're working in. I love you that. Know, we're, yeah. You know, you know, we always say on this podcast, James, food is culture. And I think we can, you know, in, in your, from your point of view, fruit tree planting is culture is what I'm hearing you say, but please carry on. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, we've been working with the uh, uh, tribe out in Arizona to really restore this culture of orchard keeping, you know, helicoptering thousands of trees down to the Havasupai tribe, the base of the Grand Canyon. Wow. You know? Now that town is, I think one of the first in the in the country where virtually every family has fruit trees in their backyards now. You wow. know, that's a that's a pretty powerful, powerful statement. And and for those folks who have this tradition of orchard keeping, who over time have maybe lost contact with that through moving or, you know, all sorts of things, you know, this might be a reintroduction to getting more produce and produce in their lives. And gosh. That sounds an awful lot like what you're all about, Lori. Isn't that the truth? We want to get more fruits and vegetables on every table and day in and day out, James, as an arborist and fruit tree planting foundation uh, professional, you are, you're part of the solution to that. So you are, you are part of our mission. We are mission aligned, no doubt. Absolutely. I love it. So, but I have to ask you because I am sure that um, undoubtedly we have people who don't know the answer to this question. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I even know the answer to this question, but what is an arborist? I mean, obviously it's someone who loves trees, but I'm sure there's a more scientific way to, and accurate way to explain that. If you don't mind, I'd love for you to just help people understand what you're, you, you've identified yourself as an arborist as part of your profession. What's that even mean? Sure. So arboriculture is the care of trees. Um, okay. it, it, it is a, as simple as that. Now, it could be somebody who, like myself, you know, I had the great opportunity to study at university. 
uh, you know, done quite a bit of uh, tree care on the planning side, you know, making sure that as buildings are being built or as roads are being redeveloped, we get make sure that trees are thoughtful and part of the project from the beginning. Um, there's also arborists out there, you know, when you have a problem with your tree out front, need some pruning, you call up the company, that uh, lady with the chainsaw, she's probably an arborist. She's out there, yep. she's studied, yep. gained some trade skills, and is going to do that work safely uh, and efficiently for you. Yeah, that's amazing. Um yeah, as you were as you were talking about the the planning of different city projects and whatnot, it's you know you it's important that uh, trees be considered part of city infrastructure, right? I mean, this is as everyone's talking, I'm just sitting here thinking, do I even have enough trees in my yard? That's really what's going through my mind right now. But um, <laughs> totally, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, no, no trees. Trees are totally a, a critical piece of infrastructure for cities. And I really have yeah. to shout out cities like Atlanta, who are planting a food forest in a city park, you know, communities like Fishers, Indiana, who have a 33 acre agri park where they're growing food and giving it to the community around them. You know, the, those are really important functions of city, you know, government supporting its its constituents. That's pretty cool. That's super cool. And I'm so proud of, you know, I live in Indiana, so I'm very proud of the city of Fishers. Good job, everyone. Hopefully Indianapolis can get on board soon with that. Um, what a great example, though. I mean, and thank you also for explaining the importance of uh, what's happening in Atlanta. And I'm sure there's other many other cities, too. Um, Allie, I'd love to talk to you now about the Kroger Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation and the project that you have funded for April, that's in, you know, in part in celebration of, of this Arbor Day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just, you know, sitting here listening to, um, on Arbor Day, listening to these incredible partners that were so fortunate, fortunate to work with, right, James, helping families grow their own fruit, and mm -hmm. Brian, Arbor Day Foundation, bringing trees to communities, and, you know, Lori, produce bombs, really access to healthy and nutritious food. There's just so much alignment, obviously, you know as a funder, that's what we look for in collaboration. But, um, you know, so I mentioned a little bit before, but the Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation is the public charity of Kroger. And um, it was founded in 2018 and designed really to create a more equitable waste-free food system by advancing collective action and innovation. Um, so we really look to support organizations and innovators across the country who share um, our vision of a world where everyone has access to affordable, nutritious food and where no surplus food is wasted. I mean, the statistics are, are staggering. Um, yeah. as you know, many of, you know, right. 38 million people experience food insecurity today, which is just too so many. heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, one um, is too many, but oh my million gosh. Too many, yeah. Right. And, and over 25% yeah. of food is wasted and, and it's, you know, right. that creates sustainability challenges and, you know, carbon emissions and, um, a lot of money left on the table, right, for people. So we really look to partner with um, incredible organizations that are helping us further our mission of creating communities free of hunger and waste. So mm -hmm. um, we were connected with the Arbor Day Foundation, who, of course, you know, very well-renowned um, organization and looking around, you know, the work that they're doing that overlaps with our communities. Uh, I mentioned there's, you know, several of our communities. We're really fortunate um, today to be doing this work in Indiana, mm -hmm. um, you know, close to, uh, my home. Central, yeah. Well, Cincinnati, and, right. Yes. And, and central division, a thriving, you know, I mean, yeah. great division for the Kroger company and, and very close to the HQ area of Cincinnati. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and such an important footprint for us. Right. And so, right. you know, really what we do, um, at the, at the zero hunger, zero waste foundation, and that we're able to do in part, thanks to our generous customers that, donate um, at the register is really to give back to our local communities and align with our sustainability um, and hunger relief work. So, I mean, I, I know Brian's going to talk a little bit more about two in more detail, but this specific grant that we funded is two urban orchard projects in kind of opportune neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, you know, described really as, as food desert, low income neighborhoods. Um, and we're working in partnership with, uh, James and the fruit tree planting organization and the Arbor Day Foundation to um, plant trees in, in these in these areas. And, 
James mentioned, right, Fishers, um, which is one of the planting places, which actually is taking place today, uh, which is so incredibly exciting. How awesome to be doing this project on um, the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day. I can't think oh, of what a, a better, milestone. What yeah, a milestone. A better yeah. synergy between kind of missions all around. Um, and the other project took place a couple of days ago in Terre Haute which also, you know, really important community to us. And we're just really excited to be able to, you know, not only bring together the sustainability aspect of planting trees, right, for shade, for for food, for community, for beautification, for the environment, right, but really to couple that with educational opportunities, community engagement, and really investment in, in building um, more resilient neighborhoods. So excited that some of our leadership was able to to come out. Um, some program employees able associates able to get engaged. Um, really thanks to leadership of Eric in our central division. Um, and and we're excited to to have the opportunity to be able to partner with Arbor Day and the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation on this. Absolutely, project. yeah. It's such a you know the, the each of you has brought uh, to this discussion some great insights that are rooted obviously in and you're professional stakeholder with this project, but I will say as, as the three of you have shared some great remarks thus far, one thing, Ali, that I must applaud, you know, with the, you know, in terms of underwriting a project like this, this is, I mean, I know that there's, you know, James with his arborist hat on might, might want to slap me after I say this, but I feel like it's a sunk cost. Like it's one time you're doing the, you're doing this investment and it's going to, you're going to have decades of impact, um, from this one investment that you're doing on these, on these, uh, you know, with these fruit tree plantings and, and the, the community tree gardens basically that you're making. I mean, it's, it's really unbelievable. And the reason James, I had to kind of throw a little tongue in cheek there at you is because I'm thinking I, I'm not, a, I, I know that maintaining these, these trees, I, there's undoubtedly some ongoing expense, but really in the grand scheme of things, the majority of the expense is in underwriting the project at the time of planting. I'll ask, you know, I mean, am I right with this, Ali, James? Yeah, the, the biggest barrier for folks to have a community orchard is that initial part of just getting those trees in their hand and in the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the beauty of, and really success of our orchards around the country is that we have amazing partners like Kroger and Arbor Day Foundation who can help us out with that first part. And mm -hmm. then really like we're able to work with these awesome locals, you know, community folks who are hungry, you know, literally for more fresh produce. They're going to do all kinds of things to make sure those trees get watered and cared for for really the decades to come. Isn't that amazing? What is the, like, how long could one of these trees that's, you know, been planted today or a couple of days ago um, in light of this, of this project that's been funded by Par by Kroger, um, how long could these trees last, James? These, these apples and pears and pawpaws, these will live and produce fruit 50 or more years. Not a problem. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. It's a very long time. It's amazing. Okay, well, James, I'll keep it with you. I'm going to ask every one of you this question. Um, what does this project mean to you? It is just so inspiring to see folks come out, you know, folks in their own community coming out, you know, on their own time, really curious to learn about how to plant a tree uh, and really, you know, inspired to keep on doing it after they after they leave these events. You know, right. I, I talk to people every day, you know, about about trees and gosh, everybody just wants to know more and they want to be closer. Mm -hmm. You know, that, whole, that hug a tree. It's so true. People just want to do it. Mm, I love that. Yes. And Brian on, on the 150 anniversary of Arbor day, mm -hmm. I have to imagine this is a, this is a great way to celebrate, but I want to hear it from you. What does this project mean to you? Why, why has this been such an important initiative? You know, so honestly, this is one of the projects that I've been the most excited about. Yeah. Um, even since joining the Arbor Day Foundation, I've been with the foundation now for just over about a year and a half. And, you know, my role really is to build relationships with companies, listen to goals, listen to what they want to do, and then find really meaningful projects that are going to address those goals. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in looking at Kroger and looking at their goals of zero waste, zero hunger, being able to bring them a meaningful project of an urban orchard, it's ticking everybody's boxes. It's 
so others centered, right? Like right. there is, there is no act in pre-planting that is selfish, actually. Like it's always for someone else. Great it's point. always for that next generation. Yeah. It's so, other. It's, and it's, so I think for me, the chance to be here planting trees in, 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 in uh, you know, in Fishers, celebrating Arbor Day um, with these people doing this really important work that is not only beautifying the area and bringing some shade, but it's bringing food um, is like, it just is amazing. Right. And, and on a personal note, Mike, I have four kids. They completely understand what I do. They totally get the importance. They love that their dad is all about planting trees all over the world. And so that just is easy to go home to, right. It's easy to go home and look at them and say, you know what I got to do today. (laughs) Right. Um, It's so fun. So, you know, and that, that pride in what we do, I think all four of us that are on this broadcast right now can, can relate with that, relate to those sentiments. I mean, work that makes the world a better place is, uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing to call it our work, right. Um, It doesn't feel like work often. And, so, Absolutely. yeah. And, you know, and, and when I think about when I think about the alley, the corporate world, um, you know, it can be really cutthroat. And then you hear about these wonderful programs like Zero Hunger, Zero Waste and what Kroger has done. And it's like, wow, this is this is really important. Um, but, you know, you've been you you explained your background and how long you've been involved with all of this. But what has it meant to you to see this project come to I don't really even want to say the finish line. I feel like it's more like we're at the starting point, you know, like we're just getting (laughs) started here, but, um, but you know, what's it, what has this project meant to you, Allie? I'm really passionate about building more sustainable and equitable communities. And I think this really just goes back to the importance of our local communities from a Kroger and a zero hunger, zero waste foundation standpoint. We do a ton in our communities around hunger relief um, and, and food waste and, I just love working on projects that focus on sustainability and kind of tie the two together, right? And and we talk a lot about collective action and bringing more people together and, and, you know, creating more equity and really driving partnerships um, that can make a lasting effect. And I think what's so cool is that, you know, for years and years to come, long past my time on this beautiful earth, we'll be able to, you know, see the benefits of this project, right? And really be able to see the importance of um, something that we kind of, I would say, many take for granted, trees. Uh, I mean, I live in the middle of the city, so I definitely don't have enough trees in my backyard. Um, But I I think what's really, um, I'm excited and it's just so important to us to invest in our local communities and to build more resilient ecosystems and really try to always leave things better than we found it. And, you know, hopefully by bringing some um, engagement, education, fruit, uh, green spaces to these communities, right, we're continuing to build um, strong partnerships for for many, many years. Right. No, I love it. And, you know, uh, grocers and, you know, I, I live a mile from my local Kroger and um, for sure, Kroger is, it's a community institution as much as it is a grocery store. And um, it's so fitting that these, these community orchards are, are, you know, part of the great work and how we're going to celebrate this milestone year for Arbor Day and uh, continue to bring that zero hunger, zero waste foundation work alive in, in the community, every community that Kroger touches. So this is, this has been just absolutely a joy to learn about. I am so impressed with all three of you. Thank you very much for being here. Um, it doesn't seem like it, y'all, but we've been talking for almost a half an hour now. So we are we are sadly almost to the end of our show. But before I turn the mic to each of you for your closing thoughts and final remarks, I just want to emphasize to everyone, we heard a lot of great, we heard a lot of great insights here. Um, one of my big takeaways is um, certainly the remarks that we shared about, um, you know, the even the inequities that exist within where trees are at um, in our local communities. That's, I think, something that I'll, I'll never forget um, from today's show. And um, gosh, I just, it warms my heart to think that these fruit trees that are being planted today um, in Fishers, Indiana, and, and a couple of days ago in Terre Haute, Indiana, I mean, that's 50-ish plus years of bearing fruit and, and bringing a positive impact to the community through those uh, community orchards and that, and, and, and the beautification side of it too. I mean, 
the trees are beautiful in addition to feeding us. Um, and then of course, all those environmental, lovely environmental impacts that Brian was explaining so much of which aligns with um, our goals in agriculture uh, centric to regenerative farming practices and, and combating climate change and all of those things. So um, before I give the mic to each of our guests, I do want to thank Eric Halverson. I know Ali mentioned him in some of her remarks and he's with the Central Division of Kroger, spearheads all the community and public affairs for the Central Division of Kroger. And um, I know he's a loyal listener of this podcast. So Eric, thank you for tuning in week after week. And thank you for letting us know about this great Great work that um, you know three amazing organizations have come together to make the world a better place today um, in celebration and in honor of Arbor Day. So, with that, we will we'll have everyone kind of sign off and say goodbye. Brian, we'll start with you, then James, and then sure. Allie. We'll have you sign us off from the show and say goodbye to all of our guests. But James, we'll start with you for your closing closing remarks and uh, and goodbyes. Sure. So it's been really just a pleasure to be in Indiana, you know, planting trees, you know, at, at this point, we've planted more than 200 with, you know, your friends and neighbors here and sent about 150 home with folks, wow. uh, you know, to make more fruitful communities. Uh, you know, it's our goal to, you know, plant 18 billion fruit trees across the world. Uh, you know, there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, so, you know, just so thankful for these great partners here on this project and you know if you want an orchard in your community get in touch thank you yes we i appreciate that you know we'll put, we'll link all of the um urls for these three respective organizations in the show notes so thank you james thanks for being here great. yes brian your closing remarks and goodbyes yeah absolutely um first i want to add one thing to my last comment in terms of the meaning of celebrating arbor day in this way and I, it actually comes from james who i was uh, lucky enough to be with in brooklyn uh this week planting trees in a park there and he talked about you know this is the most important day of this tree's life here as we're planting it in the ground this is where it's going to live for the next 50 80 years wow. and so to be a part of something that is just going to absolutely outlive you is an amazing feeling, right? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, today on Arbor Day, there are different announcements that have been made about what we're going to do. We're, we're really ramping up our efforts to scale this work and to focus. Um, when we think about scale, we want to actually double what we've done over the last 50 years in the next five years. We want to do 500 million more in the next five years. And that we can only do that with partners like Kroger and, you know, and, and members and everybody pitching in to get right. us to that goal. The other thing that we really want to do is make sure that we're focusing and using technology uh, to make sure that we're putting those trees where they're going to have the greatest impact. And that's, you know, these communities that are nature deprived. So we want to make sure that we're going to be in 90 percent of the, the neighborhoods and areas that we assess as nature deprived. There are going to be projects there. And so we're actively, you know, seeking more and more partners, more and more capacity to do these really, really great, really important things. I think that today you should absolutely check out Arbor Day, the Arbor Day Foundation website, which is going to, is going to be in the show notes, I believe. Yeah. You should is it arborday.org? What is it? You yep, arborday.org. Perfect. Okay. Um, you should absolutely take a picture with a tree and share hashtag Arbor Day. There are matching organizations that are going to plant trees if you do that. Um, Amazing. We have, you know, okay. There are so many opportunities to just jump in and get a free tree, plant a tree, plant a tree on behalf of other people. Like, look around you. There are lots of opportunities. Celebrate the day. Hug a child. Hug a tree. Just appreciate all the things that I think nature provides for us. Thank you. Beautifully said. And Ali, thank you again for being part of this show. And you, I welcome you for closing remarks. And you actually get the last word of today's show. You're going to sign us off from the show and say goodbye to our listeners. Great. Thanks, Lori. Thank you so much for having all of us on, for giving us the opportunity. I'm just so inspired with our incredible partners, uh, James and Brian, and, and their thoughts. It's just been so um, uplifting to to talk about this work and have the opportunity. So shout out to Eric again. Thank you for, for making this possible um, for us. And, you know, I think we're just so, so excited to, to start and continue these partnerships. Um, 
in these in our communities, right? And hopefully expand to other communities. Uh, Brian just mentioned nature deprived. We talk a lot about you know food deserts, right? And I think this project is just such an interesting uh, mix of bringing the two together and really focusing on where there's the most opportunity, um, where we can really uh, bolster collective action and, and create opportunities to work together through collaboration, um, leading partners and communities together and, and really uh, educating as well, right? James men mentioned uh, trees going home with people, which is just so awesome that that's happened this week um, in Terre Haute and then now in Fishers. And um, so I think we're just really excited about this work, about the sustainability aspect of, of zero hunger, zero waste, and how it aligns with our mission and the opportunity to work with um, such incredible partners in Indiana and, you know, where Kroger has such a big presence and, and many people call, call home. And, you know, Lori, I think it's the work that Produce Moms does to really uh, furthering access to healthy and nutritious foods. This all just ties so nicely together. So Really, really loved being here. Really excited for the work. Can't wait to go out and see the orchards myself. Um, looking forward to seeing all the Arbor Day photos um, with, with Brian's shout out now and then looking back at that. And um, I, I just have to really say thank you to our generous customers at Kroger. They make all of this possible by rounding up at the register. So really excited to, to further that work with our mission of creating communities free of hunger and waste and happy Arbor Day. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you.